SEO is AO. Welcome to the show, John Mueller. Hi, Jason. Good to be here. <laughs> Lovely to meet you. We're sitting in Google's office in Zurich. And as I noticed, there are lots of offices in Zurich. It's Sorry, growing. Google it, yeah. It's growing, yeah. Because yeah. I, I turned up at the wrong one down there and I asked for John Mueller and they said, who? <laughs> wow. Well, it's, it's, I mean, there are a lot of people in Zurich, a lot of people at, at Google. So yeah. even if you say John Mueller, it'll be like, so which one? <laughs> yeah. Well, in, in our industry, kind of, we tend to think John Mueller, there is only one. But in fact, it's quite a common name. And in Google, yeah. there are several. Um, yeah. And you, it's, you realize that not everybody in Google knows you. That's that's true. Yeah, I I, I kind of like that. There are lots of people called John Mueller. All right. Um, yeah. I I don't know if they like it that like this random <laughs> John Mueller speaking about SEO shows up when people are searching for their name or in their images and yeah. stuff. Like that. But uh, that's yeah. And then people connecting to the right. wrong John Mueller on Twitter or on that the, uh, that LinkedIn. happens. Yeah. And yeah. then they get really pissed off because they're asking him questions. They go, no, but I'm a doctor or a dentist. Or. I, I don't know. So there's, there's one political scientist uh, who, who's apparently very visible. All right, then okay. there, there's some musicians, uh, someone who runs a barbecue. All right, okay. uh, so w once I went to a conference. Somebody who runs a barbecue? Yeah. Isn't that just something you do in your garden? Well, it's a real he does job. it in, in like large, larger scale, let's say. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it was fun because I, I went to a conference once, and one of the moderators obviously did some research. And they're like, so John, tell us about your political interests. <laughs> I was like, that's, that's the wrong John Mueller, sorry. OK, I'm suddenly very glad I didn't do any research on you, because I probably would have said something. How about the barbecues? No, no. No, 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 no. wrong one, sorry. Fair <laughs> enough. That's life at Google. We, we're going to start off with that. Um, what's life at Google like? I've just come in, it's really posh, really kind of, uh, really looks great, wonderful food. That's all I remember from Google is the great food. Yeah, it's, it's really nice. So I, I think the, the overall idea, is with, with, especially with the food, with the cafe, all of that, is to, to make it easy for people to do their work. OK. Uh, where if, if people don't need to kind of worry about, like, where should we go for lunch? What should we do? Like, where can we get a coffee? All of that. Then they can spend a lot more time focusing on work. Yeah. So it's almost like self-interest. Like, yeah. we keep people happy so that they do a good job, which in turn... So the cafe again. pays for itself. I guess. Because, I mean, I, I, the little experience I have of going out for meals at lunchtime with people in offices is that they can never decide. Everyone's always arguing about where they're going to go, and you end up in the worst sandwich place in town. Yeah. yeah. Doesn't this, happen here. Well, I mean, sometimes people are unhappy with the food. That's, really? That, that can happen, sure. OK. That happens everywhere, okay. I think. Yeah. Well, the only, I've, I've eaten at Google France, and every time I've been there, it's always been absolutely delicious. OK, that's um, good. But as, cool. as you say, people pitch up, eat, have yeah. a chat, probably talk about work so they're not wasting any time, and so it's very profitable for Google yeah. to have the cafe. Yeah. yeah. Is that all life at Google's about, then, the cafe? Um, cafe and playing pool, I think. Oh, right, OK. I think you do a lot of that. Well, I, I don't pay a lot of pool, but some, some people do. But uh, I, I think it's another one of those things where it, it makes it easy for people to relax while they're working and to take a break from, from the workstation, yeah. do something slightly different. Usually they work, do it together with other people on the team anyway. So you can chat about work problems as well in well, kind of a more relaxed way. And you can come to more novel solutions sometimes. Yeah, so yeah no, that, that's, that's, that's the thing. I mean, I, I remember in Mauritius, I lived in Mauritius for years, and I had to write a song a month. Mm -hmm. uh, and I found that as soon as I got away from my desk and drove the car and sat there and didn't have anything to do, I came up with great ideas. And when I sat down with the people I was working with and talked about stuff off topic, the ideas came as well. Is that yeah. outright for you too? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there, there's certainly a certain amount of stuff that you just have to do. It's like you, yeah. you get a bunch of emails, you get a lot of work that you need to complete, and you just need to sit down and do that. So, so when you've got emails, you don't have to play that. Pool. But I mean, it's always good to take a break in between. Yeah, to really stuff. loosen things up. So what's a typical day for John Mueller in Google in Lagerstrasse? And I love Lagerstrasse. I love beer. So Lagerstrasse is perfect. I was thinking that this morning as I came up. That's, yeah, I, I didn't actually know what the, what the street was called before I sent out the invite. Really? Yeah. <laughs> You've been here 11 years and you never bothered looking well, at the street. Well, I now. mean, the, the, building, <laughs> the building is fairly new. And uh, the, the old building we were at, uh, which is another part of Zurich, yeah. that used to be a brewery. 
So Ooh. that kind of matches the same as well. Yeah, yeah, great. Uh, they still have uh, the, the water fountains, uh, the, the fresh water that they use for the brewery. Wow. And people from the city, they come by with crates of empty bottles of water and they just fill it up. Because it's... It's just... It's, it's source just water, what you yeah, call spring water, yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. And it's still a Google office? Yeah. And you're, you regret moving out of that one and coming to this new one? I don't know. Not really regret. No. I mean, things change all the time at Google. I, I mean, if you're used to SEO, you see stuff change all the time as well. Good and point. Even internally, <laughs> it's like, OK, you're sitting here now. And then, oh, actually, we need this space for another team. So you need to move to a different building or a different floor. Yeah. That, that happens. Yeah. You have to say, stay flexible. I mean, from, from my point of view with the SEO, I mean, very quickly onto SEO, is it's changing at an accelerating rate. Uh, and it's kind of scary and kind of exciting at the same time. Is like five years ago, I was thinking, yeah, I can more or less keep up with this, although I'm always chasing the beast, Google. Yeah. I do apologize for that term. Um, and now I'm chasing the beast, and it's getting further and further away from me um, because it's evolving much faster than I can, I can actually figure out what it's trying to do. I, I don't know if I'd say it's evolving faster, but uh, sometimes I, I guess bigger steps happen, which, okay. which can make it look like it's evolving faster. Uh, so in particular, all of the, the JavaScript site stuff, mm. that's something that I think a lot of the, the more old school SEOs, they really struggle with. Yeah. Unless they have kind of a development background, where then you think, oh, OK, Google's finally getting it. Mm. Um, but for, for a lot of people, it's still. JavaScript, you use JavaScript to hide stuff from Google, right? Oh, right, yeah, OK. So, <laughs> so like, why would Google tell people to use JavaScript? It doesn't make any sense. OK, that's really old school, then. That's, I mean, cause that's ba a Bartosz, lot of our thinking. You know, Bartosz, yeah. well, I can't say his name. Yeah. Um, I almost got it when I actually interviewed him. I mean, he, he's saying, you know, he's the big specialist in JavaScript. JavaScript, is, JavaScript SEO is slowly dying because Google's getting a grip on it. And the, guy, the day Google actually wishes to put the resources into it, we won't need JavaScript SEO? Well, I, I mean, I, I think he's talking about JavaScript SEO as in doing something special for yeah. JavaScript okay. sites. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, I, I think that's kind of our goal in general to oh, yeah. kind of deal with what the web has and less so to tell people, like, you need to do it exactly like this so that mm. we can understand it. Uh, but similar to, I don't know. The, the question about valid HTML or not. That's mm -hmm. one that comes up all the time. And yeah, it came people. Up, came up earlier on today, yeah. Yeah. P people say, well, Google should watch out for valid HTML. And if it's valid HTML, it should work in Google. And we look at the web and we see, well, 90% is invalid yeah. HTML. Like, what are we going to do? Throw it away? Yeah. Or we, we need to deal with it, the kind of the craziness that's out there. And that, that's one of Simon Cox's bugbears. He was saying, you know, I should get a bonus point for, for my great HTML. Um, and what you're saying is we, we can't afford to do that because there's so much rubbish HTML out there. But the secret, and it's what we were saying in the Webmaster Sanger, is being consistent. However, however you do it, be consistent. And as yeah. you said, if it's across the site, you can see a pattern. And machines are very yeah. good at understanding patterns. You're away. Uh, yeah. Be consistent. Would that be fair comment? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, it, I, I mean, I, I had employees in Mauritius, and I, I, I mean, they they used to just do things ad hoc. And I said to them, I don't care what your system is, as long as you have a system. If it's a rubbish system, exactly. at least when we need to correct it, we can correct it on mass in in a, in a big chunk with a bit of code. Yeah. And if you don't have a system, there's no way we can do it. We have to do it manually, and we're going we're gonna to kill each other from frustration. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, I think having a system makes it also a lot easier for you to debug anything. So if anything yeah. weird happens in Google and you see like some pages are working, some pages are not working, if every page has a completely different system, then yeah. you, you can't systematically fix that problem. You really have to kind of look at it individually. Whereas if it's a system, then you can fix that system, and then it works across your whole site again. Yeah, OK. And back to your typical day. You, you answer okay. loads of emails, then you go and have a game of pool. Um, so, so I try to kind of disconnect almost before work. I, I oh, cycle right. to the office for, for about an hour. Oh, yeah, you said that. And but you don't listen to podcasts when you're cycling. No, no that, you. that doesn't work so well <laughs> when cycling. So, so music kind of works, because sometimes there's more wind noise, and sometimes there isn't. There's traffic and yeah. everything. And if you have to watch out for all of the words, it's like, oh, I need to go back 10 seconds. And okay, when yeah. you're cycling, it's like, that's, that's probably a bad idea. Yeah, And you concentrate, and you run into the back of a car and I, crush your wheel. Yeah. I haven't tried that, but I, <laughs> I try to avoid that. 
Um, and so that's kind of how I, I try to disconnect in the morning. And uh, a lot of the stuff that, that happens in email, that's um, a lot of internal teams kind okay. of interacting together. We have a lot of people who are doing stuff externally for webmasters, and they, they need information. They need kind of guidance. We need to put together strategies on, on how yeah. to deal with things. Uh, so, for example, we're doing a bunch of webmaster conferences this year, a lot of them in India and Southeast okay. Asia. and Because those are phenomenally important markets. Well, those are kind of areas where traditionally we, we don't see SEO conferences. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's something... So you're, yeah. you're helping out or, or it's self-interested like the cafe? Um, I, I think it's it's a bit of both. Okay. It's a bit of both. So it's I, it's important for us also to show the value of search mm -hmm. and to give people an understanding of what you need to do in order to be visible in search. And a lot of that is, is really basic things. Yeah. But uh, for, for us, it makes sense to do that in kind of a systematic way so that we can kind of like with web pages, like don't, don't end up doing kind of messy things all across the board and never really know what actually works. Yeah, OK. Uh, so and and from, from our point of view in the SEO community, mm -hmm. we see you uh, interfacing with us, talking on Twitter, so mm -hmm. on and so forth, and don't really realize how much you deal with the internal teams of pulling all what we're saying and pushing it back to them so that they can actually change things. Yeah. Uh, maybe yeah. we don't appreciate that enough. I, I don't know, appreciate that enough. I mean, it's, it's always hard to say, like, what, what is enough? Uh, but a lot of that does, does go back to the teams. And it's not, not always the case that we'd say, like, well, this person said this, therefore we should fix this. Mm. Uh, but rather, if we're working on a new product or working on a blog post or communications around a certain feature that's coming out, then we can go to them and say, well, actually, people complain about this a lot. Therefore, yeah. we need to make sure that we don't kind of run into that same trap again. Yeah. Um, things like, like making sure people get enough traffic from search. Mm. Uh, if we come out with a, a feature that shows all of the content directly in the search results, then that's like really nice, but actually not so great for the people who are making websites. Mm. And uh, we, we push back on things like that and say, OK, we need to make sure that uh, at the very least, the people who are creating this content, they see the value that they get out of it. So yeah. that they have metrics in Search Console or wherever where they can see, OK, Brilliant. Yeah. Google is showing my content this many times. I'm getting this many clicks. I, I see kind of what's happening. And, and, and the idea I'm getting less clicks, but I'm getting more visibility and more multimedia. I mean, I, I, I've got a bit obsessed by that idea of the 10 blue links are slowly disappearing through, through Darwinism. Um, if I want to put it like that, and being replaced by rich elements. And you say, OK, rather than saying, OK, we're losing the clicks because Google's presenting this content directly in the search, we're saying we can actually get in front of people with images, videos, sure. uh, a knowledge panel, uh, answer boxes, whatever it is, or carousels. Get in front of people. For, I, mean, I heard once years and years ago, seven touches before you can actually sell to somebody. So you can say, well, if I can get my brand name out there in the SERPs, I, I can count that as a touch. I can get my name in front of somebody. And then when they do come to the site, this is what Rand Fishkin says, uh, is I get less traffic, but it's more qualified and more valuable to me. So rather than looking at a KPI of traffic, look at a KPI of value of that traffic in terms of time on site and then ultimately sales. Yeah. Fair? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that makes sense. It's, it's, whoops. That's no, all right. Okay. I, I think it's, it's really tricky from, from an SEO point of view because it's really tempting to just say, okay, yeah. I'm tracking the clicks. I, I have my hit counter on my website, yeah. and it's hit it's, counter. That's something I haven't heard yeah, since 1998. It's, but but it's still kind of that feeling. It's like yeah. I'm I'm tracking the number of clicks that I get from search, yeah. and actually the the absolute number of clicks is probably not what is relevant for your website yeah. or for for business. Like if you're a small business, then you don't need people actually going to your website if they can come and visit you in person. Mm. If they're looking up the opening hours, they don't need to go to your pages. No. They get the opening hours and they come and visit you. Wait, and which means local. Local SEO becomes much more about optimizing that that GMB panel. That just the information that you're in the right place. And at then the right people time. complain that it's more and more difficult to click through to the website. But then you're kind of saying, for a lot of that information, they don't need to click through the website. And when they do, the website might not present the information very clearly. I don't know. I mean, it's I, I can't say that in general. No, and sorry. I I think um, as these things I evolve, can. well, okay. <laughs> I, I I think as these things evolve. That that balance yeah. 
it kind of fluctuates a little bit in, in one direction, and then it fluctuates a little bit in the other direction where I say, okay, now we're sending too much traffic, now we're sending too little traffic. Like finding that balance is hard. I think the user expectations, they, they vary quite a bit as well. And they yeah. change over time. I mean, sure. uh, and we're all getting lazier and lazier. So I'm kind of looking at the SERPs and saying, oh, the video's already in the SERP. I'm happy with that. Click on it. Don't need to visit the website. I'm happy because I'm a lazy person. And one thing that's making me lazier is Google. Um, Google Maps is a great example. Is kind of, you're now saying, how can I possibly find a coffee shop if I don't have Google Maps? Yeah. Which just shows how, and, and then I look at Google that's, Maps and I'm saying, that's 200 meters away. I can't be bothered. Okay. Well, not quite, yeah, but you know yeah, what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think, I, I mean, being more lazy on the one hand is, I, I don't know, it's hard for me to say like if it's a good thing or a bad thing. If it yeah. frees up your mind to do things that are more interesting for you, then I, I think that's good. Well, I'm, I'm on that side of things. I mean, I'm, I'm saying I want to get a coffee, I want to get a nice coffee, and I want to get it quickly. Fair dues, and now I can think about something else, and I don't spend... Uh, old restaurants is a very good uh, example. I mean, when you go out with people, we're talking earlier on about going out with your work colleagues. Everyone are arguing about restaurants. You go and uh, for me, finding a restaurant, you go and I want four point five stars. I'm looking for this type of cuisine. I don't want to walk more than two miles. I'm getting yeah. more ambitious with my distances. That's good. That's good. <laughs> Thank you. I'll get a bike. Um, and it frees me up to say, I'm going to sit down and eat, and I don't waste twenty minutes thinking about that. And I can think about SEO, for example. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds good. No, no, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fan of Google, I'm sorry. No, no I, I really love Google Maps. It's, it's so much so that when I think back at the times when, when I used to travel a lot to visit customers, mm. it's like, I have no idea how I managed without like a GPS yeah. or without maps. It's like, print things out and yeah, yeah. use that to navigate with a car. Like, how, how did it ever work? Now, I was wondering about cell phones as well. I mean, when I was a kid, you didn't have cell phones. Yeah. And you'd say, I'll meet you at the clock tower at 12 o'clock. And if somebody got the wrong clock tower or was late, I mean, you just hang around for an hour. And you say, well, they're not coming after an hour. And then you'd go and they'd say, well, I turned up five minutes later. Yeah. yeah. How do we do without them then? Yeah. And Google Maps That's is crazy. Yeah. Talking about Google Maps, a guy from, uh, ooh, ooh, what was it called? Um, he's now at uh, Amazon, uh, was saying that Google Maps is a perfect example of a knowledge graph functioning in real time, i.e. it's identifying entities, relationship between those entities, and answering geospatial queries in real time that it's never heard before. Is that a fair okay. comment, do you reckon? That sounds... Sounds about right. I mean, I, really I, like I don't it. know about Google Maps, but it's that sounds about right. Like yeah. we, we really have to kind of understand the entities in order to highlight that in in Google Maps properly. Yeah. And also the the related things. I don't I don't know if you see that sometimes you click on one thing and it highlights other things that are yeah. similar nearby, and I, I find that really useful. Yeah. So I mean, it, it's looking at uh, an entity with the context of that entity and the things that are related to that entity. Um, in terms of interest or, or yeah. so, yeah, brilliant, I, 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 yeah, great stuff. Yeah. Um, I was thinking about, sorry, oh yeah, and the other thing was reviews and what I've been looking at now, I keep searching, for, I, I keep doing it, coffee shop with free, free Wi-Fi and when it comes up with a result, it actually highlights reviews with free Wi-Fi because the coffee shop never tells us it's got that attribute. Okay. Um, and that's brilliant because that was the Bill Slowski was talking about using reviews to get attributes to entities. Yeah. Um, and that, that seems to be working incredibly well. And my yeah. very simple example, I mean, I've got to get more ambitious about that. Yeah, I, I think that that's kind of similar to how, how comments used to work on the web. Like if you have a blog post, right, yeah. now you, you have a lot of content in your blog post and you have a lot of comments and people write about the content on your blog post in different ways. Mm. And that's, that's also something that would rank in search. So it's, it's kind of like, it feels like an evolution of like blog comments, <laughs> essentially. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but, but Which blog, are blog really old school. Yeah, and blog comments got so spammed that they they're no they're longer. They're not that useful anymore. Yeah. yeah. Is that going to happen to reviews? Do you think, or is that I a trick know. question? I I'm sure they'll get spammed. I'm I'm sure they get spammed already. But yeah. It's. Uh, but hopefully, Google are going to spot the spam more easily with machine learning. Let's be I, positive. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's something that's that's obviously really hard to do at scale. So. Yeah. And, and back to your, your day, I keep coming back to the day, because that, okay. that was the theme of the day. Was, was, uh, and you do these Google Hangouts, and you interact with people with tweets, and, and so on and so forth. And we were talking earlier on, is people tend to take your word as gospel, and you get quoted all the time. Isn't that quite a lot of pressure? Because everything you say might get pulled out of context and cited as being proof of some rubbish SEO theory. It, 
It does happen. I mean... <laughs> well, it's... I did it to you. Because I said, can we talk about brand? Because you said, look after your brand because, because Google this, has a yeah. great memory. And you said, I don't particularly remember saying that. And it's not my speciality. And that's very unfair of me. Yeah. It's... Uh, I, 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 on the one hand, I think it's, it's, it's almost natural because there, there is not content for everything out yep. there. So if you're interested in this one specific topic and someone from Google says something related to one specific website or one specific scenario on that topic, you're like, this is everything Google has ever said on this topic. Yeah. Therefore, maybe it applies to my case, too. Yeah. Uh, so Which is deeply unfair on you. It's, it's tricky, but it's something that, that we're aware of yeah. in the sense of when we say things, we, we try to frame them in a way that we we can allow it for, be, for it to be taken out of context. Which, uh, which, which explains why people seem or think that you're being too vague and you're not being specific enough, is you're saying, well, if we're too specific, people will take it out of context and apply it to every... I, I, I used yeah. to say applying a particular... Sorry, applying to the general a particular example. And in economics, that's a big thing for me. And it's the same thing as people saying, well, here's a tiny example. Now I'm going to apply it to absolutely everything. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you have to be really careful what you yeah. say. Yeah, I mean, a lot of a lot of the questions that we get are very site specific. Yep. And then we can say, well, in your case, you should move to subdomains, and then everyone and then is somebody like, cuts off the oh, everyone should move to subdomains, <laughs> <laughs> and then you suddenly start all of this controversy again. And it's like, well, Google is saying subdomains, but actually everyone should move to subdirectories, mm. and then it's like. I, I, I don't know which world I ended up in. Yeah. Um, but and, and on a personal level, does that bother you that people people take issue with, with stuff you're I saying mean, and get annoyed with you personally? Sometimes, oh. sometimes, but I mean, you, you get used to it. Okay. I, I think what, what I learned more from all of that is that this happens for SEO, but it happens for everything. So mm. every time I see something in the news where it's like, oh, this, this politician said this, and I was like, probably there was a little bit more involved yeah. here. And I, I understand that this works great to get a lot of clicks, but is, there's probably a lot more involved there. That's a very good point, because people tend to cite you to try and attract attention to themselves or get clicks and get visits uh, by saying something out of the ordinary or absolute, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, I, I don't know. It's, it's hard to say, say like a number, but I, I'd guess like two thirds of the content out there is kind of taken out of context yeah. and uh, presented in a way that doesn't really apply to those cases that they're talking about. And that's, that's within the SEO space. And I assume that's kind of similar within all other kind of technical yeah. spaces, maybe even general with news. Mm. So from all of these things I've seen from the SEO space, I tend to get really jaded about news in general because oh, like, right, yeah. it feels like, well, like take someone, someone is probably just picking up on a bunch of keywords and this sounds really snarky, so yeah, okay. it attracts a lot of attention, but like, how much of that is really behind so it? So you now take all news with a big pinch of salt. It's basically I ignore everything. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's terrible. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. And when you go to conferences, I mean, you do the, you travel away to conferences quite a lot. Not that much at the moment, but oh, okay. Yeah. Are you going to be at Brighton this year? I don't know. Oh, you we'll, don't know ahead we'll of time. See if they invite me. I don't know. Oh, okay. I, I thought it was a lot of fun last time. They they gave me a sofa and basically a I had, sofa. They gave me a sofa for the whole day or just for the, for the whole day. But <laughs> but it was basically in exchange for Q and A with everyone. <laughs> so lots of people dropped by and asked questions. It, oh right, it okay. Was, it was really fun. So you were sitting in a corner on a sofa and people came over and sat on the sofa next to you yeah, and asked you specific yeah. questions. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah. And you actually enjoyed it. I thought that was pretty good. And then yeah. you did the Q&A at the end of the day at, then, on the stage. Then like a real Q&A at the end, yeah. Yeah, OK. Yeah. And it, I mean, when, when you're actually just talking to somebody on the sofa, you don't have to worry too much about what you say. Exactly. Right? That's, that makes it a lot easier. Like If you can talk to people where you're not on the record, then it's a lot easier to be a bit more direct and to really say, well, actually, you don't need to worry about this, or you can solve it like this and like this. But w would you get annoyed with them if they then repeated it in public? I, I think that's less of an issue because then it's clear that this is coming from a one-to-one -one discussion. And it's about their specific site. Exactly. Brilliant. It's okay. like John told me in person like this thing, and from if you take side. it out of context, then you're kind of the person who's 
like whoever's saying that is, is kind of the person who's at fault for taking it out of context. Okay. Whereas if it's in public, then you point to like this YouTube video and it's like, look at this like second five and short clip where John says exactly this. And it's like, yeah. oh, proof that <laughs> Google is, is telling everyone to move to subdomains. So I mean, I mean you, you actually really like just sitting down and talking to people one to one and you like the Google Webmaster Hangouts. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I find it really useful. Yeah, because I mean, I, I was asking you earlier on, don't you repeat yourself a lot? And you were saying, not that much. It's it's surprising. <laughs> so in in the beginning, when we started doing that, I I think maybe like three four years. No, it must be longer. Uh, I, I thought we would do them maybe for a year, and then we'd have all the questions covered, and then we'd cut them up into short pieces and put them on the, the YouTube channel. Uh, but people come up with new questions all the time. Yeah. And a lot of things are things where I imagine you, who, who are working with multiple sites, you, you see the same thing. It's like people come up with different variations of a problem, and you're like, well, I understand the general idea of how to solve this problem, but your situation is kind of unique. Yeah, I mean, I, I, when I do audits for clients, uh, for site migrations or technical audits or strategy audits, or whatever it is, there's a lot of things that just keep coming up and keep coming out. So you start off with your list. And then after a while, you kind of go, well, actually, that's a little bit different. That needs to be a little bit different. We don't need to do it quite like that. This priority for this site isn't necessarily no. uh, what it's going to be. Uh, and I realize that I actually do earn my money, which is a very nice thing to be able to say, even though a lot of it is quite standard. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and, and the, the number of possibilities is infinite. Yeah. It's a, it's, a Google, which is oh 100, 100 billion, million. I, it, what I, I read imagine. is a scientist asked his niece what the biggest number in the world would be called, and she said a Google. Okay. And a bigger number than that, he said, what's the bigger number than that still? And, and she said a Googleplex. A Googleplex. Okay. A Googleplex. So, Googleplex. So okay. So Go not, Google not Google Plus. <laughs> 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 which is now... Out Go of fashion, <laughs> gone. Oh yeah, I was talking to Gennaro Cofano about the, the, the Google graveyard. and all Because okay. I, I had this kind of Im image of Google always doing these successful products. And in fact, there's a phenomenally big Google graveyard, including Google Plus and multiple other things. Yeah. And soon, Hangouts, you were saying earlier on, 1st of August? Yeah, yeah. No, what yeah. it is, not Hangouts, it's the Hangouts live. on air. The hangouts on air. Yeah, I think the YouTube live streaming stuff will still work. Yeah. Uh, and if you just do it with your own webcam, then that should just work. But kind of the setup where multiple people can dial in and kind of discuss something, I think that's going on. Yeah, away. so you've got a problem for Google, Google Webmaster Hangouts yeah. as of one yeah. month from now. Yeah, I sent them an email. I was like, don't you know who I am? <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I imagine like, who is this yeah, guy? Yeah, which gentleman are you? <laughs> who is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> Too many people in Google. Brilliant stuff. Thank you very much, John. That was absolutely wonderful. SEO is AEO. Thank you, John. Thank you, Jason, for having me. Lots of fun. <laughs> Brilliant.